Okay, welcome everyone. This is a teaching and learning meeting on uh, Wednesday, May 27th. Uh, we have a recording the session. And today's main topic is the open source uh, portfolio. Uh, 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 and once you're talking, it might help keep down the extraneous noise and um, uh, thank you. Uh, so yeah, mute yourself if you're not talking. Although I think that for the presentation for Karuta, they actually prefer if you use audio over chat. That was what uh, Jacques and uh, Janice were letting me know. So when we get to the discussion um, portion of the meeting, you know, please feel free to turn your mic on and jump in with uh, questions and comments and ideas. Um, the agenda is pasted into the chat, and I'm just going to kind Neil? Of yeah. I'm sorry. This is Tricia. I think I just uh, made a mistake for Janice again and uh, had to, to uh, I accidentally disabled her as presenter and then re-enabled her, and so I'm not sure if we lost her presentation again. Does oh, yeah. everybody still? We did. That's my, my bad. Okay. Janice, would you mind uh, resharing? Now that you're almost an expert at it. <laughs> <laughs> so while Janice uh, goes to reshare uh, her presentation. Oh, that was quick. Awesome. Um, uh, so first of all, uh, welcome everyone. And um, I, you know, obviously Open Aperio is coming up. It, it starts on Sunday. Hope to see many of you there. It's very exciting be very uh, busy, a lot of interesting presentations. Uh, are there any project updates and announcements? Certainly for those of us who are going to the conference, we'll hear lots of project updates there. But, uh, oh, I do have a project update. Um, I don't, is it Louisa on? Uh, let's see. Uh, did you, I don't see Louisa on. So I'll mention that the LEAP project, that uh, it has been merged into Trunk, which is Sakai 11. The, uh, the changes. So if you want to look on Trunk and go to lessons, you'll see the changes. They're primarily, you know, cosmetic. They're user interface things, and they're only a small portion of the complete wireframes. And I think that'll be one of the discussions we have at Open Aperio is sort of like, what's the best way to move forward? And do we want, like, the next phase to be completing the wireframes, or do we want it to be, like, a functionality change? And uh, But I think we learned a lot from this process of engaging um, the Express Labs um, user interface folks and trying to coordinate all the different development and the tool owners. So it was, a, I think, a really, you know, really good experience. Um, so let us know what you think. So that's the leap uh, one. So are there any other updates? Um, I noticed that uh, Wilma's not on. I'm for the Samago test and test uh, the step project. Um, I think we're waiting on resources for that one. Like we have a plan, but we're not going to have. I think what we're going to show is is what it will will look like, but not not in trunk. So we'll have some examples to show from Dayton University, which has some of those um, features in uh, in their current production. And um, let's see what else. I don't think we have anyone here from the Gradebook project. I think that's got about a month away. So I guess that's kind of my my update, and we're when we get to a pair, open a period, what we're hoping to do for Sakai 11 is narrow is is to uh, we have a lot of great ideas for what will be in scope. We already have a lot of great. Uh, whoops. Hello. Yes, no. Yes, we My mic's on.
Sorry about that. Is the echo gone? Yes. Hey, something weird happened. Even when I muted myself, it was going crazy. So yeah, it was weird. It was really weird. So, true. All right. So anyway, those are the project updates. Uh, anyone have any questions um, before we move on? Okay, great. Um, feel free to ask later if you think of something. Um, and I will put in a URL here for nightly to org. So if you want to look at the changes that are in trunk, you can go there and either log on to the MySQL trunk or to the Oracle trunk, uh, the refresh daily, and then you can you know create a course site or a project site and add lessons in. You'll see the changes from the all right, so I'm going to pass it off to you, Janice. Uh, feel free to go get uh, to get started on today's topic. And I still don't see your screen. Or I wonder if. Uh, yeah, what happened was I disabled everything when the aliens took over. Yeah, that's what they were hoping to do. Unfortunately, they were hoping we would do that. Unfortunately. <laughs> so, all right. Well, good. Your screen came right up. That's awesome. I'm going to mute myself now. Well, good morning, everyone, and thanks for joining us. This is the Karuta use case discussion, and I am joined by my colleague Jacques Reynaud from HEC Montréal, and I am Janice Smith from Three Canoes LLC. Uh, this is a Karuta use case discussion in which we're going to do a very brief review of Karuta for those of you who haven't seen it and some really short sample use cases and demo just to get everyone up to speed. But the bulk of the train, bulk, bulk of the time will be a discussion of use cases that you would like to see in Karuta. We can't promise anything today, but we're gathering information about how you would like to see us develop the application to meet your needs at your institution. Uh, a brief review of Karuta. We're a next generation open source portfolio. We can do portfolios for learning, assessment, reporting, showcasing. We're LTI integrated with LMSs. We have a migration path planned from OSP with a proof of concept ready to go. We're under incubation with a Perio, and we have a release coming out on Friday of this week that is suitable for piloting and for production. We invite you to join us for a full day hands-on workshop Sunday at Open a Perio. We're also plan we also have a Karuta conference session, a state of the project session, a portfolio birds of a feather session, and we'll be at the showcase session on a mon all of that is on Monday at Open Aperio. We hope you'll join us. Jacques, would you like to discuss these two use cases? Jacques? Okay. Yeah, thanks. Uh, do you hear me? Yeah? Yes, we hear you. Okay. Well, uh, we're not going to review all the presentation we did last time, but uh, just to, I mean, Karuta is, is a very flexible environment that sort of let uh, the designer or the teaching and learning specialist sort of set up the the, the portfolio process and this is this is a portfolio process that is uh, quite interesting uh, in the sense that it's been used at the school of education at the university of montreal and it's it's also shows the complexity and the power the possibility of a, a karuta in this case uh, i mean the students were doing internship in 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 a school and they had like uh, a set of competences and components to sort of achieve uh, I, I'm not, you know, giving you exactly the wording of all these competences and the components, but I mean, it's 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 put in a fairly general way, but it, it was quite precise. And then students had to sort of self-evaluate themselves at the beginning of the internship, at the mid-internship, and at the end of internship. And uh, the teacher in the class and also the, the internship supervisor will also came up with uh, also evaluation. So 
here we in this screen you see that the, the sort of process that at each step the students had to self-evaluate and the red is like uh, um, uh, I'm not ready, Gr yellow is I'm improving and green is uh, I'm doing fine and at each step they had to put comments and or maybe a sort of a plan the, to sort of how they, they would improve. So it's, it's a sort of a fairly uh, interesting process that could be captured it's a one use case, there can't be many others in, in Karuta. And uh, then uh, in, in, what's nice about that is the way we set up things, you can create um, uh, dashboards, which basically sort of summarize all the information that is uh, uh, available in, in, in one portfolio. This is the dashboard for one, one student, but it's possible to create dashboard for, let's see, the supervisor or the, and you'd see here, like with, with the colors, you can get a, glip, a quick look at how the students will, were doing and how they would improve over the, the internship. And so this is one, one interesting use case that has been quite uh, interesting to, to, to follow. Uh, yeah, well, I put another use case just to tell you that, uh, I mean, Karuta can be used to sort of uh, support all sorts of important information. So in Baltimore, we're going to show uh, what we call a, a sort of rubric portfolio where, I mean, I'm sure that you are aware of the ACU uh, uh, rubric uh, document. So it's really easy to put that within Karuta and sort of access it afterwards. If you uh, do a portfolio, you can you can sort of access all these uh, dimension, the descriptors, the, the rubrics, and you know bring that into a portfolio and and I have students self evaluate or having like instructor using um, doing evaluation or students submitting the work or doing all sorts of stuff related to these rubric. Okay. Uh, yeah, maybe you want to show me, uh, and the last example I want to show is uh, maybe someone can give you, can give me the presenter. Can you switch presenters, Neil? Yep, I'll do that now. Just give me one second. And, uh, okay, Oop. okay, Jacques, you should have presenter capability. Okay. Okay. Okay, I think you see it now. Yes, we see it, Jack. Okay, good. Uh, I'm going that. I'm, I'm going to log in. This is a, a, a Sakai implementation that we have. It's really uh, basic, vanilla one. And just going to show you a glimpse of how it looks within Sakai. So I'm going to log in as a student and go to the Karuta project and. Uh, the Karuta tool. So it's LMS, IMS uh, LTI integration. So this is the screen the students will see. Um, of course, it's, it's, uh, this is can be sort of specialized. This is like the, the actual uh, Karuta uh, uh, use, uh, user interface. So I'm going to click on, uh, on this portfolio and Again, just to show you how, I mean, uh, students could, uh, it's sort of similar to the education that I have, the, the School of Education, but suppose I'm in a course and this is a, 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 a tentative use case. I'm, uh, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm an instructor. I, I would like my students to be a little bit more reflexive on, on their learning. So I, I'm going to ask them to sort of self-evaluate themselves with respect to a certain a number of learning outcome. So uh, I have the students here that will self-evaluate before the course, uh, maybe at the end of the course, can write some comments uh, uh, about this learning outcome. I'm doing fine. Uh, and you can do that for other learning outcome. And if I click on dashboard here, well, this is a, of course a very simple one. I don't want to sort of, uh, should have something too complicated, but again, you'll see that you can have here uh, the, the the different learning outcomes will be there, and there, there will be self-assessment, 
results before the course, after the course, and eventually the tutor uh, or the, the instructor evaluation. So again, this is a, a very simple uh, use case. Uh, I'm sure that there are many other ways. Uh, and of course, it's probably at the learning outcome part that uh, you can have a, a very different process. You can have, you can ask a student's question. You can, you can do all sorts of things. Uh, because Karuta can accommodate uh, uh, very different uh, approaches uh, about this, uh, about learning. So I guess I, I will stop there. So because the idea is to really uh, have you uh, discuss use cases. So maybe you want to switch the uh, uh, the presentation or to Janice or to the rest of the people and the the call. Okay, um, we're hoping to have an open discussion of what Karuta could do for you, and uh, we invite you to use your microphone to ask questions or pose a issue, uh, ask us to demo something else. Uh, right now, Jacques has the presenter controls, but uh, we could change that. So who would like to start? What are you hoping Karuta could do for you at your institution. Please take over the microphone or use the chat. So there's a there's a chat that's come in. So we yeah. have a question: Is Karuta integrated with a uh, Markbook the, Gradebook tool? Uh, I can answer that, Janice. Uh, we're working on it, and uh, we almost have something working. It, we just need a couple, I mean, uh, advices on on finishing the job. So we should be, uh, we should be. Uh, I mean, we we're going to the session with Chuck Severance at the uh, Perry Conference on the LTI integration workshop. So by the end of the Sunday, we should have an answer to our very specific question. And eventually, I mean, yeah, this is something that should work. Uh, in the coming months. Yeah, one thing that I'm interested in is knowing about the difference between LTI 1 and LTI 2 in relation to gradebook. Um, gradebook passes one grade over in LTI 1. And it'll be interesting to see how LTI2 can expand the cap capability. Karuta works in either format at this point, LTI1 or LTI2. How about another question? And feel free to use the chat or to turn on your microphone. What would you like to see Karuta do for your institution? So I, I have a question for the, for the group that's on. I'm, this is Neil. I'm curious, uh, how many of you are interested in um, portfolio for doing this kind of assessment or for accreditation or for um, for students um, you know uh, having a portfolio to show their own work um, if you want to jump in uh, feel free just to turn your mic and ask a question um, this is Dave Evelyn from Johnson University and uh, I, I want to say some people, uh, we, I, I think I've talked uh, with uh, Renell one time or, or Janice, um, but we're really interested in it because we currently use Live Text. Live Text is a great tool, it's a great uh, service, um, but we're really sort of having this problem where students have a lot of their content segregated, so they've got a lot of content in Sakai because that's what we use as our LMS. But then they've also got to build out these portfolios for their teacher education uh, professional development, and they're doing it in live text. And so there's, there's this question from students about why do I have to take all this content in Sakai and now suck it over into live text? I'm doing a lot of double duty work. And so from an application standpoint, it would be great to have, you know, this sort of thing that's in Sakai native and be able to go forward with not having to use another service. So I think I can start and then Jack can correct me if I'm wrong. Um, right now, uh, Karuta is integrated into Sakai, but it doesn't yet talk to all the tools in Sakai. LTI 2 is the key to making that happen differently. 
we're starting with uh, email notifications as a service using LTI 1 and LTI 2. Actually, we didn't even have to use LTI for that. And we've got that working. We're now tackling the gradebook issue, how to pass uh, ratings from Karuta into the gradebook. And a subsequent question will be how to integrate resources and assignments with Karuta in Sakai. LTI2 is capable of uh, being used to provide a service to make that happen. We understand that there are some organizational and security issues that might complicate our process. Um, but hearing a call for that to happen is very important. And we'd be interested, Dave, in knowing how you would like to see content from Sakai move into Karuta. Are you thinking about resources? Are you thinking about assignments? Are you thinking about something else? Obviously, the content has to live in some tool. Right. I think at the lowest level of things, I would actually just simply, at, at the lowest hanging fruit, it would just simply be nice if students are, who are putting content into their own My Workspace resources area could say, oh, I did this great project and I'd like to include it in my, my, my portfolio. And so they'd have uh, maybe maybe the LTI could actually say, well, here's here's access to your your my workspace resources content, and so then just throw it into the into the portfolio. Now, obviously, I think the assignments area and other sorts of things could be beneficial, but I think at the very least, being able to have content that they can you know throw into the resources if they've already got it there, uh, accessible within the context of the portfolio in Karuta could be at least uh, a start. Mm -hmm. Jacques, do you want to look, comment? Yeah, this is an, a great uh, point that you raise. Uh, uh, Dave, uh, this is of course something that we're going to discuss at this uh, LTI workshop. Uh, we did discuss this issue with Chuck Severance before, and actually we do that at HSC in Montreal because I don't know if you, you know about uh, Zonecourt, Open Syllabus. So in Open Syllabus, there is this uh, link between uh, 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 some kind of tool that is like with the, the resource. So this is something that we should evaluate very carefully. And uh, I mean, if, if we have a lot of interest for that, of course, this is something that we could we, we could do uh, in the near future. And it, it looks like something interesting. Thanks for raising that. Uh, uh, let's see. We have a comment, maybe Karuta can work with lessons tool as it already has a feature called student content which allows students to create their own content. And then we'll, Dave, we'll get to your, oh, I see I skipped a comment too. So let's deal with uh, Fawel's comment first. I think I mispronounced your name, Fawe. Um, and then we'll move to versioning, and then we'll move to Dave and um, a, other additional ones. So what about the integration with the lessons tool, Jacques? What do we think about that? Well, this is something that uh, we haven't really, uh, th th that was raised in, in our last presentation here uh, at this uh, teaching and learning meeting. This is not something that we have studied very carefully because uh, I guess we the, the lesson tool is is moving forward so maybe we should have a look at at this but uh, the idea of course is that all the LTI goal is to have to enter in operability with the tool so uh, that would be great if we can could access resources that have been created within lesson as well I mean this is something that uh, could be interesting as too. Yeah, maybe, maybe I want to uh, respond now to Dave uh, about the uh, uh, are the facilitator can review portfolio content. Of course, I mean there are all sorts of way uh, the designer can sort of uh, uh, set many different ways f where you can have review. Actually, there are ways where a student can ask someone to review what's going on in his portfolio or portfolio. So all this uh, reviewing uh, of content uh, done by students uh, or whatever is, is really key to what we're trying to do. Uh, a quick one about versioning. 
Uh, this is something a little bit more technical. I'm not sure I can answer that now, but uh, we certainly don't have this feature right now. But we have everything is stamped though, in in. Uh, so, but I, I'm not so sure about uh, having something with a, a version in it. So maybe you want to go on, uh, Janice. So versioning means the version that students have written. In other, in other words, students could provide many versions of their work. Is that what you think is meant there? Right. So this would be the same sort of thing where I go through, perhaps as a student, and I create a portfolio, and I think, I think it's the best I can come up with, and I submit it for sort of a draft review process. Um, and so then it's submitted, but then at the same time, and, and I have to forgive that I'm using a construct that I understand from live text. So the student can continue to work on the portfolio even after they've submitted it, but I don't see any of those changes until they've submitted it a second time. Um, and so from a, from a reviewer's standpoint, then I can look at those, those two different versions, and this may be sort of out of the scope, but I can look at those two different versions and say, did the student pay attention to the comments I made about how they should improve this part, to, this particular part of the portfolio? I see. Okay, sometimes uh, when we, um, just a comment here, um, rep how do I say this positively? Every time we switch technology, we have a chance to make things better. And it isn't always the best idea to exactly replicate. So I think the whole questioning is what the question might be, what is the best way right now that we can think of for versioning to happen in Karuda? Maybe not replicating exactly what live text does, but something similar that everyone feels is functional. Uh, let's see. We love all of these, these questions. Um, let's see. What about the standards in portfolios? Dave, were you uh, meaning, this is a question I have, were you meaning all of the standards from all of the states and all of the national organizations? Can you elaborate, please? Uh, I wouldn't necessarily go that far because I know that other po other folks do that, but um, and maybe it's just a matter of within the context of the portfolio mechanism that students have an opportunity to be exposed to what those standards are. Um, uh, because a lot of times when I'm, when I'm personally reviewing a portfolio for a pre-service uh, teacher, I'll look at the standard, because I don't have them all memorized, quite frankly, um, and so I'll look at the standard to make sure that, I, that, that, they're, that they're measuring up to the standard to what degree. And so rather than actually having the standard, I go look it up or bring it up on another tab, I actually have the students elicit what the standard is right there uh, in the context of their, their content in the portfolio. Um, that helps them become more familiar with what the standard says, and hopefully they're using it as also sort of as a measure against, okay, this is the content I'm putting in the portfolio, this is the standard, and so my content should measure up to or somehow meet that standard. So in my case, then, I have those students, I have my students actually type in those standards, um, and I don't know if there would be an easier way to address that, but of course, across states and across uh, content areas, it may not necessarily be the easiest thing to do, and so maybe a text area is the only real solution. Yeah. Well, uh, I think you're referring to the the um, the feature in Live Text that preloads all of the standards from all of the states. Karuda does not have that mechanism right now. Of course, we could create it, but it would be an awful lot of work. Um, what we do have is the ability for any institution to input any standard into the portfolio process, uh, create a rubric to evaluate that standard, and have the students be able to see the standards and see the rubric evaluations. Um, so the principle is there. The opportunity to create your own is there. What's missing, and we're not sure how to go about it, is the loading of standards from many, many states and many, many contexts. The preloading. Of course, you can load them yourself, but the question is, will someone do it for you? Jacques, I think you wanted to say something. Yeah, of course, because this, uh, this uh, use case that I presented about the School of Education in Montreal was really about standards. So all these competences and components and whatever were were part of a big uh, uh, a big uh, a standard that was really inserted right into the portfolio process. So the students were really thinking about all their internship was was really related to these standards that they they were 
trying to achieve. So no, we don't have all the standards inputted, but it's not that hard to do that once we have one. I mean, and of course it, it does take uh, more than like an hour to input a standard, but it, it, there are ways to sort of accelerate that. But uh, but about the integration of the standard within the uh, portfolio discussion and evaluation, yeah, this is something that is really uh, uh, a core a core business for for Caruta, and we do, we do that in a very flexible way. Hi, it's a uh, Marvin here calling from Oxford. I want to. Uh, if I may make two points, uh, I think it's a very interesting presentation. Uh, initially, I was thinking because we are not using uh, portfolio here at Oxford, I was thinking it might not be relevant, but uh, it turned out very interesting. Uh, I want to just um, quickly reinforce the points I made earlier uh, because um, so far, from I can say in Sakai, we have a you know, number of individual tools. Um, what was lacking, it was uh, similar to the lessons to can draw things together um, because this is a teaching learning call and we are a teaching learning group and we all interested in improving uh, student learning. Um, we need to, uh, I'm just thinking about when we develop any tools or like ePortfolio or whatever and we need to uh, think about how we can create a learning environment and improve the learning experience. And therefore, it is very necessary, I think, the important step forward for the lesson to, to be developed. Um, that's why I said it earlier um, in the text the chat, chat room, um, if we're going to introduce individual tools into the Sakai learning environment, we really need to think about how this new tool can work together with the other tools to help the teacher to create the, their lessons or to help the students to to learn. Um, so it's just my uh, one point. Uh, another point is we, did, we talk about uh, review and the comments and I was working with, with a group of uh, students a couple of years ago, it's about seven, eight years ago now, it's like a wiki environment, similar to ePortfolio probably. Um, they're working together, they um, uh, collaboratively. What they also want is to um, to uh, not only a comment, but also they would like to discuss, have a discussion alongside of the portfolio or the wiki page. They can discuss certain points uh, along the page. Um, that might be uh, useful for you guys to think about it when you uh, improve the tool in the future. Thanks. Uh Janice, I might answer that. There are many ways that the students can do that. Like there are, in Karuta, there are ways to create pages for a group of students, and there are ways for students to input their comments uh, and sort of sort of create a, a kind of discussion, as you were mentioning. So, but it's a, it's an interesting point with respect to the interoperability of the tools. I mean, you're right on. I mean, this is something uh, we should we should all aim to. But uh, but I guess portfolio is, is more something from the from should reflect more the student point of view or could be used on, in some different ways. But uh, yeah, well well, it's a it's an interesting point that we should be aware of and work on it. Jacques, we have an uh, opportunity to discuss reports and assessment information in reports. Yeah. Would you like to comment on how the dashboard could be used for a report? and how semantic tagging is uh, a key to the use of Karuda? Sure. Um, yeah, this is a big improvement with version 1.1 1, 1, 1 of uh, Karuta is that, I mean, Karuta is kind of special in the sense that y you can set up your portfolio and then work on your process, and eventually you're going to sort of tag the information you want to keep for reports. So if you want to, I don't know, you're interested about one or two really special uh, evaluation by instructor or by tutor or by whatever, I mean, it can be tagged. And once it is tagged, uh, it, you can run the sort of report tool that so and go in and get all this information from the different portfolios and sort of create a sort of unified uh, way of presenting, I mean, all the information you want about 
what's going on in all these in these aspects. So the idea is really it's it, these are not reports that are pre assembled by someone that sort of decided that this is the the report that the, this is the main report that we're going to produce with this tool. The users are really in control. I mean, the designer is really in control of the type of information he wants in, or uh, she wants in the report. So uh, all this uh, information about assessment, about uh, students, uh, what kind of uh, file the students have submitted, and and whatever information you can you can find in useful in the portfolio, you can sort of bring up and 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 put in a report. I don't know if I sort of give the the right answer, but uh, I, I, maybe we can. You can have other question, and I can continue. Yes, and these reports can assemble data across individuals, users, and they can uh, be customized for a look and feel in a in a table situation where you set up the information the way you want it to appear. We have a question, how does Karuta handle multiple reviewers? You want to answer that, Jacques? That's an interesting question. We're really aware of the problem. We know people that have been working on that. Um, this is something we will have to seriously think about it. But of course, yeah, I mean, if you have a reviewer that says uh, it's, it's good and another one that says it's not so good, I mean, you have to sort of find a way to come up with something. And usually, I mean, this is something more in, in, in terms, I mean, you have to find rules actually that says, uh, uh, are we going to take the average or are we going to to take the best one? Or, I mean, this is something that is uh, is, is very, I mean, this these issues are, are appear a lot in, in portfolios. And uh, again, uh, this is something we'll, we'll have to think about it, but uh, it's, it's also an issue that, I mean, every institution has to sort of, discuss and sort of come up with some kind of rule to sort of sort the the the, the, the might be conflicting uh, result just to assure you it is possible for any number of reviewers to review a Karuta portfolio uh, the question is what do you do as shock said uh, if they disagree how do you handle handle inner rater differences and reliability Tell them to get over it, okay. <laughs> okay, uh, do we need to go back to the versioning? Uh, I understand that versioning happens in a wiki where you can go backwards and forwards to the type of information you, you listed before. Um, just to indicate right now, Karuta, uh, maybe Jacques can correct me if I don't say this right, but if you make changes in a Karuta portfolio, it's real time and there's no, right now there's no record of a previous entry into the portfolio. It changes as you save it uh, newly. Jacques, do you want to say anything about? Yeah, th you're right. But of course the students can, there, there are ways you can sort of copy your portfolio and uh, uh, for the example that was raised, I mean, you, I can submit one portfolio to a reviewer and then uh, work on a, a different version, I mean, a different. I, I can do a copy and then work on something else and then th this is something that uh, we, 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 we actually see in a one of our partner in Grenoble is where uh, in Caruta there is a way to create a resume. Uh, and there are actually many resumes that you can create because uh, uh, they might be different for different employers. So this is not really versioning, but it's it's really, you can have like different copies, different, I mean, version in quotes of your own resume and that you can share with different employers depending of the of the situation. Uh, question, how can we try it out? How about a URL? Uh, that'd be fine. I mean, you'll receive, I hope, uh, uh, an email on Friday. Uh, we'll have, like, uh, we're rolling out our 
uh, release 1.1 on Friday, and all the information will be there. Uh, I, we just have to do a last check. I don't want to give you this uh, URL right now because uh, there, there are a small issue that we want to raise about server. So it's going to be available on Friday, this Friday. I hope you can wait till Friday. <laughs> We will put the release information out on the Sakai user list and the portfolio list um, with the new lists in Aperio. Yeah, and we'll probably do a, a tweet uh, uh, link to Aperio. So if you're in, on Twitter, you, you can access it too, as well. So is anyone else besides Dave using portfolios right now? And is there... Is there something that you'd like to replicate? We have Tai Jin Kim uh, just starting research into portfolios, getting matrices set up in OSP. Uh, question about transition from OSP to Karuda. Um, right now we have a proof of concept migration path from Karuda to, sorry, from OSP to Karuda, in which it is possible to set up a matrix-like structure in Karuda and transfer the data from the forms in the matrix cells into Karuda. Uh, the Karuda matrix looks a little bit like OSP and all the data can be there including all of the attachments. Uh, so if you're, if you're already set up in OSP and you want to make a transition to a new Sakai portfolio, this will be possible. Um, so we've proven that it is doable and in as soon as the conference is over we're um, going to be perfecting the, the the process. So Gail says they're doing they're piloting e portfolios at Virginia, U University of Virginia. Gail, if you have any uh, issues you're struggling with, please let us know. Uh, Dave says resume served out of Karuda uh, would be is a good idea. Absolutely. So Karuda is now set up for showcasing, allowing students to create their own portfolio views in at least the beginning of a Web 2.0 format and allowing them to do some designing and selection of content in order to share. Okay, Gail is talking about using portfolios for career services. Indeed, Karuda could be used for that. and. Huawei is saying, what are the USPs of Karuda comparing to other portfolio tools? Uh, I'm not familiar with the, I'm not a techie, so what is a USP? Do you know, Jacques? <laughs> no, I'm sorry, I should, but. Can you tell us what USP means? Oh, unique, unique, set points. unique selling points. Okay, the benefits. I'll start in the Jacques continue. Karuda is a portfolio designer's dream. I have been working with portfolios for 20 years and I'm always perplexed by the constraints of the tool to do what a particular institution needs to do with portfolios. Karuda allows you to design anything on the fly and create work processes, learning processes that benefit your students and your faculty. Um, you should try it and and see there is no coding involved. There's a slight learning curve. We're having a workshop at Open Aperio to help you get started if you're happy if you happen to come there. Um, we're gearing up to provide services through Three Canoes and ePortfolium for uh, helping institutions get started. Jacques, would you like to add to the unique selling points? Well, I guess I would continue on the flexibility. I mean, the way, uh, the technical way that Carlta is set up is really to sort of increase this flexibility. And the reporting tool is, is neat about that, is that you can, you don't have to think in advance what kind of report you want to create and, you know, plan all these uh, database and everything. You just have to run your portfolio design your portfolio process and eventually you'd say, oh wow, I need to that kind of report, I need to, I need this information and that information and then you can go on and, and sort of tag 
what you need and sort of generate reports afterwards. So it's it's really support the, the, the sort of iterative uh, process of designing portfolios and running portfolios and piloting and and which is really the key aspect. And uh, and also it's open source. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it is free and open source. Um, we suggest that you get some assistance from from our documentation or from our workshops or from one of our uh, commercial partners in terms of learning to use it. But uh, out of the box, it's open to you to use as you see fit. And piloting is absolutely the key because there are so many things you can do with Karuta. Uh, you need to find your own way and your own process that works best for you. And maybe if I can add something that will be a, a strength is also eventually if we'll have like enough of these different portfolio processes, we'll have like different templates that people can sort of look at it. It's, it's like, it's like, Showing on uh, showing y your your sort of portfolio thinking in a sort of uh, that you can share with others actually for comments and uh, and 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 also for other all sorts of reasons. But it it sort of makes you th makes you sort of write your portfolio process in sort of more uh, in a in a way that is more accessible for everyone for comments or for 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 reuse. So that's that's something that uh, is really uh, interesting too. Share templates, of course. Once someone create a portfolio, you can some share it with, with other school or whatever department, or and people can modify this. Of course, if you if you agree. So the, there's this template thing is really is really a big. You can import and export templates. Yes. So there's a question there about piloting. Dave wants to know how do folk, folks begin to pilot? Would you like to comment, Jacques? Well, the for piloting, I mean, what, I'm, what we mean by piloting is that first you have to design some kind of first draft portfolio where that sort of uh, encompasses all what you think you should you should do you can you can share it with let's say a small group of students or faculty they can use it they can comment there are ways for them to, to put, put comments actually in the process and then you can reuse this information and uh, and sort of iterate and make changes and it's again it's it's you don't have to ask a developer to sort of uh, do the changes. I mean, the teaching and learning person or the designer can do that on the fly. I'm not saying that it's going to take like minutes, but you can change things and sort of resubmit things to the, to, so it's really iterative. And this is, we think, a best, the best way to sort of make sure that your, your environment sort of uh, satisfy your, the, the goals or the needs of your institution. Are there any more thoughts or any more use cases? Any more questions? Mariano from Murcia. Is there a QA server to test? Jacques? Yeah, we'll we'll have uh, it will be part of the release. Um, yeah, you there will be something uh, there will be a sandbox uh, so you can yeah you can try try different portfolios and and uh, you can create your own but you can use some that we we have created we can use our templates and play with them and you know yes okay well they neil needs to wrap up uh, let me remind you, if you're coming to Open Aperio, we have a full-day workshop on Sunday. Uh, it's open and free if, with registration. In other words, if you register for Aperio, you can come to our workshop for free. You can come to the morning. We're talking functionally. In the afternoon, we're going to train you to use portfolios in using Karuta. We're having a Karuta session, a state of the project session, a portfolio BOF and um, a showcase table all on Monday. We welcome you there. We'll be releasing Karuta 1.1 on Friday and we'll be posting to the Sakai lists 
uh, through the Oparyo, uh email list. And uh, let's see, again, Trisha is reminding people to add their name as an attendee on the Etherpad. So we'll see some of you on Sunday. We hope you'll get in touch with us via our email post regarding the Karuta 1.1 release. That would be the best way to respond. And uh, we thank you for your attention today. Jacques, do you want to add No, I, I really want to thank everyone for your, your input. That was really helpful. And this is something that uh, we really welcome and hope to see you all in in, in Baltimore. And uh, please uh, talk to us and we'll be really pleased to continue this conversation. Okay, thanks. Thanks, uh, Jacques and Janice. Appreciate it very much. Um, yeah, I think it's good to have an ongoing dialogue, and I'm glad that you got some good input today. Um, so this is Neil. Normally what we do at, sort of at the end is we plan for uh, future uh, ways we're going to use this time together, so people will step up and uh, volunteer to describe how they're using uh, Sakai at their institution um, or suggest different topics, and we try and get people invited who will provide you know, interesting information that's relevant to this group. Um, we kind of decided that, you know, you're welcome to suggest some ideas for future presentations. We kind of decided since we have Open Aperio coming uh, this coming week that we'll probably end up generating a lot of ideas at Open Aperio um, on teaching and learning. There is a list of a number of topics that seem related to teaching and learning, although there may be many more than even are there. One of the big ones that we're doing is um, a BOF, a teaching and learning BOF. Uh, Birds of a Feather on Tuesday. It's a combined session, so it's going to be equivalent of two sessions. And we're also inviting the Aperio community and exploring whether the teaching and learning group might expand to be more of an Aperio level uh, teaching and learning group and not just a Sakai uh, teaching and learning group and, and kind of brainstorm where that might go. So um, just uh, curious if there's any questions about today, about the upcoming conference, or um, you know about what your your uh, needs are uh, for the final kind of wrap up today, and then we'll and then we'll say wrap it up and say goodbye. I notice some people are dropping off, so I guess people are busy. But uh, just take a second here to see if anyone has additional comments. Neil, I don't have any particular comments, but I'm excited about seeing folks at the conference and the discussions that we are going to have there. So that's very exciting. Thanks, Tricia. Uh, me too. I'm excited to, to see people in person. I, I work virtually, so I don't get a lot of human interaction. So this is really good for me. <laughs> Let me out of my cage here. Uh, so any other comments? Any uh, sessions that you recommend at the conference? So on our Confluence page, the uh, Teaching and Learning, which I might have uh, up somewhere here. Let's see. Um, we had a list of a whole bunch of sessions that, that were just from me perusing. Um, there, thank you for pasting that in. So if you go to Teaching and Learning calls, there, there's a whole list there. And then there's also a Lanyard site. Lanyard is the tool we use uh, for for the, the conference, let me paste that that uh, in for the Open Aperio conference. I would recommend, you know, kind of perusing that. You can also search uh, the uh, lanyard for keywords like Sakai or teaching. And let me find here. Uh, so yeah, I re highly recommend. That's a really great place because our full schedule is published there. Um, on the lanyard site. So between the teaching and learning where a number of sessions are suggested and the full program on the lanyard, I think you, you know, uh, probably can find some really good uh, um, sessions to, to look at. All right, well, thank you, everyone. Uh, appreciate it. I'm going to stop the recording now, and uh, I will see you soon. Thanks, Neil. Sure, thanks. Thanks, everyone.